there are a group of people that absolutely and honestly believe in 2016, the earth is flat. The earth is flat. Now, I'm looking right out there at Neil deGrasse Tyson. Is he still out there? Yeah. Neil deGrasse Tyson is, is out in our, our lobby right now. And I, I, I'm thinking, how in this day and age, when there are so many brilliant people, do people honestly believe the world is flat? I, 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 I was watching these videos, and they're explaining it. They're trying to explain scientifically. Yes, Tila, Tila Tequila believes she is one of these people that believe the world is flat. I don't get it. I don't get it at all. Is there a way to get Neil in here for two seconds to, to explain this? Can he come on mic for a couple of seconds? Neil, I got to get an answer to this. Neil, if you could just take a seat for a second. I got. I, I need an answer to this. I saw something over the weekend. Just a seat. This, you got the microphone, the seat. Yeah. It's all ready for already like, somebody to come in. Just in case. In case. Just, in case. <laughs> just in case. We, we never know. All right. No. Well. I was watching some videos over the weekend that were uh -huh. preposterous. Yeah. There are so many conspiracy theories and whatnot around that you can't even keep track of them. This one blew my mind. The earth is flat. Have you heard the flat earther people that believe the earth is flat? This is a deep failure of our educational system. Thank you. <laughs> I've stopped chasing after people with those belief systems because I don't see the point. That there's something deeper going on in our society that somehow enables people to believe they're making cogent arguments yeah. that they're not. And they're not. And so, so you know why I think it is the way we teach science is you're just some empty vessel and we pour the science into you and then you regurgitate it on an exam. Right. Whereas science is a way of thinking. It's a way of understanding and probing the operations of nature. You get enough pieces to then add your own curiosity and innovative, and, and that's how you proceed. That's how you, that's how you proceed. But you need to know what. So I, I to the point where I wrote an op-ed a few weeks ago, maybe a couple of months ago, titled "What Science Is and How and Why It Works." It's on my Facebook page. If you want. Just just put that title in Google, you'll find it. And I try to s show people that science is a way of understanding. Right. And you can't just pull stuff out of your ass <laughs> and claim that it's science because you, you throw some science words behind it. Well, Neil, let me, let me briefly explain what this is all about. Uh, they think that the Earth is flat. Now, it looks like a – you ever see a flat globed map from the North Pole? It, it's flat. Flattens out. out, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, they use that as their flat template. Around the edge is Antarctica, which is an ice rim that resides along so you can't fall off. Okay. You have to go over what would be Antarctica. Mm -hmm. Now, the rest of it is in the middle. Now, I'm watching this going, well, wouldn't the equator, which is supposed to be the furthest distance you could travel on the planet, wouldn't that be shorter than the distance if you w went around Antarctica. You are thinking rationally about this. Well, I, apparently <laughs> I am. But they like, didn't have an answer for that. <laughs> so uh, even this morning, this very morning, yeah. uh, I tweeted, uh, because today is the first full day of Ramadan, mm -hmm. which is a uh, holy day in the, in the Muslim calendar. And in Ramadan, you fast during the day, and you get to eat at night. Okay, so it's 40 days of fasting. I think 40. Wow. Okay. That's a long time. So I feel maybe it's not. Whatever the number of days, you're fasting during the day when the sun is up, and then you get to eat at night. Well, it turns out, I was recently in Dubai, where they have the tallest building in the world, sure. and I did a quick calculation, and I confirmed it with others there, that, in fact, they print separate tables for residents at the top of this building because the sun sets oh. later if you are at the top of that building of than if you are at the base. Because that building, oh, and for you have it up there now, uh, that's the actual tweet. From the top, yeah. uh, uh, this this building is you know 30% taller than what the World Trade Center was. It's, it's crazy tall. And that's a picture I took while I was visiting uh, wow. Dubai. So the sun sets two minutes later for you at the top because you're seeing that much farther over the right, earth over curvature the of the earth yeah well they i don't know if they'd have an answer for that no, they, they can't they wouldn't but here's what they say it, the the sun is here's how they explain uh day and night and whatnot mm -hmm. the, so you got the flat earth right there the sun is over this plate that is the earth and it rotates or revolves around a, a center axis and that way you get day and night on there but meanwhile oh by the way i didn't i didn't tell you this the sun 
is only 4,000 miles away on on this plate. 4,000 miles away. Yeah, that's that's. <laughs> This is, but it's a, people it's, it's believe eight, it. It's 860,000 miles across. Now you're okay. just splitting hairs. I know, I'm sorry. Yeah, now yeah, you're yeah. just splitting Okay, hairs. so now here's the thing. Here's the thing. We live in a free country. I will never want to legislate what people think. Mm -hmm. You can think the craziest thoughts you want. They do. You should just never be responsible for creating legislation right. <laughs> that affect the rest of society. Legislation should be based on objective truths, not on some belief system you happen to have for yourself that others are in conflict with. So go ahead and think that, but if you try to then influence others, you're actually being, being irresponsible and you are destabilizing the foundations of an informed democracy. Absolutely. I. How excited are you about um, space these days? I think we're entering a whole new phase in space exploration, whereas these giant, huge budget projects that the government was behind are kind of being taken over by a lot of smaller, more private entities that are getting a lot done, a lot of new, exciting information. It's fantastic time. Yeah, so I think this should have been happening decades ago, first of all. But second, I'm a contrarian on some of these elements. I'm not convinced that the private enterprise will lead a space frontier in the way we typically think of a space frontier, which is how far have you gone? What planets have you visited lately? Uh, there's a different kind of frontier that SpaceX is breaching, and that's the cost of access to space. They're trying to bring those costs down, which we know that's been the most prohibitive forces against the advances of space in the recent decades, so That's which is why you needed huge government budgets to do it in the, in the first place. If you can do it on the cheap and effectively and safely, then so much of what we're doing in space could just be offloaded to private enterprise, have them make a buck, they'll do it efficiently, and the like. But if you're going to do something that's never been done before, generally there's no business model for that. Mm. I cannot see a private enterprise saying, I'm going to, we're going to send a, a spacecraft to Mars. If, I, if I'm a shareholder, I will say, uh, how much it will cost? Well, a lot, and we don't know it will be expensive. Uh, they're dangerous? Yes, people probably die. What's the return on investment? I don't know, probably nothing. Initially, no okay, right, right, right. So I'll say, let somebody else do it. This is what governments do that have much longer time horizons than the quarterly or annual reports of private enterprise. And so the government does it first. They find out where the friendlies are and where the hostels are, where the trade winds are. And once the maps are drawn, then you see that's a private enterprise. You can mm -hmm. then make a buck off it. This is why I've said this a thousand times. That's why the first Europeans to the New World was not the Dutch East India Trading Company. It was Columbus, funded by Spain who had whole other objectives right. for that, as for as that mission. Right, as a commercial venture. It okay, just, it was commercial or involved. hegemonistic, whatever, because right. she said, here's a satchel of flags, plant them wherever you go. Claim the land in the name of Spain. Mm -hmm. So there are other motivations for that that drove that era of discovery. So then private enterprise comes in. So yes, you need the private enterprise. If, if, if you're going to turn a space program into a space industry, right. you'll need that. But the big money government... Uh, if you're going to do as, something as a leader, first. you, you kind of need that. I see it as, especially uh, the the Apollo program and, and and before that, Gemini and and Mercury. I, I see that you're showing as off now. You... Yes, of course. <laughs> I see that though as national pride and international competition against obviously well, we had, the Russians at the time. What, it, now, how important is that in these days? I don't see that type of, we need to do this because we're a nation and we want to show the world how amazing we it's are. It's a perceptive question. And at the time, it wasn't so much pride, although that came, that was part of it. We were at war, simply. Yeah. We were at war. And when Sputnik was launched, Sputnik wasn't just some spacecraft. It was a hollowed out intercontinental ballistic missile shell <laughs> where they put a radio transmitter and, and it flew over our heads outside of our airspace because it was in our space space, if you will. Right. And if you do that, ground. if you can send a radio transmitter in an intercontinental ballistic missile head, you can send a nuclear warhead. Mm -hmm. And so this is why we freaked out. And NASA was formed a year, a year later, and thus began the space race. So it wasn't just pride. It was, there was a perception that it was in the interest of national security. So, and this is why we go to the moon. Now we find out Russia's not going to the moon, after we arrive there and we beat them there and we're done. 
Yeah. That's why we were not on Mars by 1985, as everyone thought we were. Right. We, you, people thought we'd be on Mars. Moon, 1969, Mars by 1980, which would only be 11 years later. Well, why weren't we on Mars? People who thought we'd be on Mars thought we went to the moon because we're explorers and we're discoverers and we're, we're Americans. No, because we, we were scared shitless. It right? Have, yeah, That's right, right. why. And then once we didn't have the reason to be scared because Russia was not gaining space as the high ground, all that money dried up. That's why the last Apollo mission was 17. We didn't even send 18, even though we built oh. the rockets to do so. We, we, we said, we're done here. On to the next problem. So don't confuse yourself. Don't delude yourself into thinking we went to the moon because we're, it's in our DNA. That's, Actually, where, yeah, well, yeah. that's, all, that's all delusional uh, cleansing of, a, of your memory of the past. So today, we're not at war. Uh, not in that kind of not war. Sense, right, right. And so, no, war will not be the driver. If we go... If we go to the Mars, I think my read of history tells me it, it'll have to be because we are at war with someone else who wants to go to Mars. Mm -hmm. Or, and I joke about this, all China has to do is leak a memo saying they want to put military bases on Mars. It doesn't have to be true. <laughs> all right, right, leak right. it, right? We'd be on Mars in, in 10 second, months. Right, right. Oh my, one month to design, build, yeah, fund yeah. the spacecraft, nine months to get there. We have colonies, cities. Okay, <laughs> so. Or, uh, or there's got to yeah. be some economic motivation. Right. Is there oil on Mars or diamond mines on Mars? Other than that, I'm, I've lost confidence that just political will is sufficient mm -hmm. to make any of that happen. Now, I've made a different point, a more subtle point, that if you have big, ambitious, big, hairy, audacious goals, big, ambitious missions that involve science and technology and engineering, and you have, uh, you have progress weekly that you can report about in the newspapers, that has a, that's a force operating mm -hmm. on society. It's like, oh, what did we discover today? What are we going next week? What right. did the astronaut do then? What, they're going to step down on, an, on a comet, on an asteroid. They're going to deflect an asteroid that might hit us. Oh, my gosh, headlines. This works its way down into the, into the, into the educational pipeline. And all of a sudden, people want to become scientists. They want to become engineers. You don't have to have special programs to get people interested in it right. because it is in the culture. It is in the air. It is in everyone becomes a – and even if you don't want to be a scientist, you'll do things that are affected by what is what that frontier is. Let's say you want to be an attorney. What You're going to say, I want to write the new laws that will affect – Mining asteroids. Yeah, yeah. Who owns an asteroid when you arrive it there? It opens up a lot. Opens up. Yeah, All yeah. of a sudden, the, the community becomes a participant on the exploratory frontier. We, we turn a sleepy it. country into an innovation nation. We do love uh, and in that way, exploration as humans. That we, it's we do, but somebody's got to write the check. Right. And so yeah. what I'm saying is if this becomes the new culture, then the, the secondary effect is that everyone is engaged in some way in the STEM fields, and it is, the, it is the STEM fields that are the engines of tomorrow's economy. Mm -hmm. The 21st century economy will grow on the back of innovations in science, technology, engineering, and math. And rather than forcing programs on people to get them interested in science, do something interesting in science. And yeah, then yeah. the interest follows like day follows night. I, ju I just heard uh, today that uh, they're opening up uh, the moon to private enterprise. Yeah, so so here's the thing. So we've already been to the moon. Right. So now now private enterprise goes to go. the moon. We already know what it costs and you can do better on that. Right, right. We can, we we can, we know what it's made of. Kind of an outline. We know it's not made of cheese. <laughs> right. So there's an outline. So fine. Go yeah, for it. Yeah. Send Which private is enterprise. A, a, amazing to me that uh, when you look back at the Apollo program and how just out of reach to anybody but the United States government that was, and how exciting it must be to people like SpaceX and other the fledgling space companies to have that goal and go, wow, can we do this? Can we put something on the so moon? Their task will, can, can they go to the moon for a fraction of what it costs right. the country yeah. to go to the moon? And yeah. no doubt they will succeed at that. Mm -hmm. Um, it's, it's a matter of when and can they make a good business model right. for it. Otherwise, it's a one-off. You can do a one-off to Mars. A private company could do that if you're really wealthy and you don't have to worry about uh, to get shareholders. get a your name <laughs> yeah, on it. <laughs> land there. You don't have to yeah, worry about shareholders, right. Yeah, right. yeah. And you'll, you can do it. Oh, my God. Fantastic. Neil, thanks so okay, much. Okay, yeah. It's, uh, because, uh, okay. You know what? I like being able to just say, hey, let's bring Neil deGrasse Tyson in to talk about Flat Earth. <laughs> Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah, yeah. Earth, uh, what's your Twitter? Earth, oh, just, yeah, I saw you put it up on the screen. It was good. Yeah, oh, okay. There it is. Yeah. At Neil Tyson. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's very it simple. There it is. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. I follow you on there. I love your stuff. Very simple. It's, yeah. Uh, great yeah, time. Trying to keep the universe going. Yeah, okay. let's, all, let's all do that.
Somebody's got to do it. <laughs> Thank you, right, Neil. Thanks, man. <laughs> it's fantastic. That's uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. I couldn't make up. a drawing quick enough. Sorry. What's up? I couldn't make a drawing quick enough. I saw. Yeah, you were trying <laughs> to draw it. It just... Uh... So that's what I like about this show. I see some over the weekend. I'm just talking about it. And it's like, hmm... I think this might be bullshit. Who's out there? Oh, Neil deGrasse Tyson's out there. Let's bring him in, and, and he'll talk about how fucking much horseshit that is. Yeah, you Flatter. just missed uh, Mostef and uh, Elvis Costello. They were here, too. And oh, see? I should, oh, man. How did that happen? Missed that? <laughs> Mostef. <laughs>